Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. I'm so excited today because we have a very special guest, and he has an amazing topic to talk about. This is Dr. Ernest Ellender, and he is actually a specialist. He focuses on recovering child childhood trauma, something that many people go through. And he just recently authored a book, and he speaks about this. Tra childhood trauma is so important because a lot of times we go through life and we don't realize, but some of the issues that we have developed in our childhood years travel with us into the present and sometimes, many times actually, can affect our future and affect our productivity, who we are as a person, how we communicate, how we feel, and so forth. So he's here actually to explain to you how to deal with it, how to cope with it, ways you could overcome it. So this is a great topic. So get your ears on, listen, because he is going to teach you things that you've probably been, you know, yearning to learn your entire life, but you just didn't know who to go to and what to do and where to start. So Ernest, I, it is an honor to have you on the show. Congratulations on your book. I just heard recently you published your book in March. So congratulations. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Only took eight years, but thank you <laughs> very much. <laughs> so Ernest, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Ah, let's see. I was uh, born and raised here in Homa, Louisiana, about an hour south of New Orleans. And uh, I, as a kid, I just considered it like, I don't know, utopia here. It was wonderful. It's kind of rural. Grew up mm -hmm. swimming in the bayous and swamplands and hunting and fishing and water skiing and kneeboarding and all that kind of jazz. Getting yeah. into trouble and whatnot. And uh, I, I love that. Uh, and then on top of play, my family's really into education a lot. So I was always uh, gung ho in school and uh, did my graduated high school in New Orleans, the Jesuit. And uh, let's see, I went out to, I ended up finishing my undergraduate still here in Louisiana and then went out to California for some, uh, for the grad school, get my PhD in clinical psychology. Uh, and then the, uh, for internship here, I went to the East coast. So I had the benefit of being able to, I know very well how we think in the South. Then I got mm -hmm. to go live out in California for seven years and see how those West coasters think and function. <laughs> very different. Very different. <laughs> yeah. And then the East coast, uh, New York area, Again, totally different. Like, wow, really, really something. So I enjoyed that, being able to see that. And then I did uh, travel some in Europe. I got to see that. It was a big part of the education, I think. Uh, I did some study abroad in Italy. And that was just a whole nother thing. Like, wow. Yeah. So many different, so many different things to experience in this world. It's really amazing, you know? So, oh, yeah. uh, and, and that's part of what runs me is just a curiosity about how things work. I, I love playing hard. I love working hard. I love experiencing things. And uh, I really enjoy challenging things. Uh, swimming competition used to com compete. And then uh, as an adult, I didn't want to compete so much in jujitsu and martial arts, but I really got into martial arts. So yeah. I, I have a martial arts school that I do run now, in addition to my life coaching uh, services that I offer here, here home and online. So that's what I do now is... Uh, Run my martial arts school, do my coaching, and most recently, as you said, uh, published my uh, book. So now I'm getting a whew, a crash course on more book marketing and uh, getting that information out there. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm doing now. You know, I I find what you do is amazing because you know, like when it comes to childhood trauma, you know, people don't realize how much of an impact it has as we grow up into young adults and older adults. You know, you know, I would, like I was mentioned to you earlier, a lot of people don't realize what the day of conception, you know, once the egg rolls down the fallopian tube, you have 240 characteristics and personalities that have developed, you know, uh, you know, with, uh, with the, with that potential child. And then once the child is, you know, um, in, in the, in the mother's womb, Everything a mother does, or everything the child, the baby hears, affects the baby. And then when the baby comes yes. out of the womb, you have an environment that it's growing up in, and everything the people around them do or say or how they act actually plays a, a huge role in the way that child is yeah. going yeah. to develop. You know, you know. So it's it's you know it's not just DNA. 
it's the environment you live in, you know, and I would love to learn more about, you know, what is your intake about childhood trauma and how it affects us in today's society as adults? You know, while you're saying what you're just saying, as far as like, a, you know, the while the child is in the womb and born, I can't help but feel a little bad for all these mothers who are like, oh, wait, it's all on me. I'm going to screw my kid up. I don't want to, <laughs> I can't feel a moment of stress. Oh, no. And it, it is so much, it can be so much pressure if we don't have the skills or the comfortable ingrained skills or comfort with it. It's a stressful thing to have a kid, especially your first kid, right? And it's a stressful yeah. process and all you want is to not mess them up. And it is, so it's, it's, it's challenging, you know? Oh, Yeah. So education skills and getting comfortable and having model, hopefully you had positive parents who, uh, hope you had parents who modeled positive parenting behaviors and habits and, uh, you know, soothe, self-soothing, other soothing skills and all those things. Uh, but a lot of people don't have that or they didn't have the whole aspect of that. Yeah. And therefore we do get, you know, nobody had it all perfect. And right. that's part, part of what we want to understand. Uh, one of the newbie kind of mistakes to, to think is, well, once I'll recover from this childhood stuff, I'll be good to go and everything will be just fine. And that's mm -hmm. not really the, the, the case. It's more right. like, uh, well, we're going to heal from it, but we're also going to develop these skills that enable us when we do encounter the stresses, like a, a mother with a child in their boom. And they're like, Oh, I don't want to feel stress. Otherwise I might hurt the baby. Right. Well, we're going to have natural stress hit us. You know, you have some medical thing, a little scares and things like that, or conflict with the spouse or what have you Yeah. during that. And it's how skilled are you at immediately self-soothing after it? So you right. have this moment and then you calm and maintain this positive sense of collaborative control in the household and uh, you know, how mature are we in our understanding of how to, yeah, you know, eat and exercise in a in a healthy way that because that that we're talking about the if we're just talking about the uh, DNA we have the non coded DNA that does respond to the environment. Yes, and it it changes so but it changes both ways. Mm -hmm. So we can be super anxious and then learn how to self soothe and then we're sending the we're we're changing our DNA to pass on soothing DNA to the to the kids you know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So it, as well, I feel again, I feel bad for those moms. Like, oh no, it is <laughs> it is a major responsibility. But there's lots of stuff out there. There's lots of wonderful information out there to guide us in that direction of of laying a foundation of strengths and good habits and education and understanding to be successful there. You know, when yeah. we encounter these inevitable life challenges, right? Failures, medical problems. Uh, you know, financial things, uh, different life traumas and whatnot, we're going to encounter them. Yeah, I don't, I don't know a kid who doesn't encounter something rough. An exactly. adult doesn't encounter something rough. So, but do we have the skills to handle it in a, a quick, effective, and relatively confident fashion? You know? Oh, yeah, definitely. Now, a lot of times people, like when they have, when they're, when they're a child, and, you know, they go through life and then they end up in their, um, you know, teens and, and, and they, they start, they start realizing that, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm not really getting the things I need. And then they start acting out and they start rebelling and then they grow up into, into adults and, you know, they're having, you know, sometimes you have, you have children that can get help in their, in their teen years or their younger years. And then there's, there are people who, who don't get help till later on. And there are people who don't get help at all. But do you find that, you know, um, do a lot of people even realize how their, their childhood really affects their adulthood years? I would say largely no. I mean, it, I've been studying this intensely now for tw uh, between 25 to 30 years. I found the childhood trauma stuff really drawing to me. It's really fascinating. I, you know, I feel like I had a, a healthy childhood, healthy enough childhood. And mostly because I remember having so much fun, all my friends and family. 
So I had this perception that I've just never encountered anything rough in my childhood and it was was just fun. So initially I was like, oh, I would love to share that experience with people who did not have that in some Mm -hmm. fashion. I can be there for them. And as I educated myself about this stuff and learned more and more about it, I started to see the, you know, the addiction in my family that does have impact, even if I had a, what I would consider a, a largely happy childhood and six and, and wonderful childhood, it still came with some difficulties and dysfunctional behaviors that I had to, I've had to in my adult life learn. And so myself in working on this book, just in the past eight years, for example, eight, 10 years, I've recognized the deeper and deeper layers of how much my childhood, as wonderful as it mostly was, has impacted me and set me up for certain failures that right. I'm now practicing, um, you, you know, uh, learning new skills and whatnot uh, to to make up for that. Right. So when we get to, and that's, I've been studying for, like I said, 30 years. Yeah. So people who have not studied, they say, well, I remember this one a lot of times I'll, when I work with somebody, they'll say, well, I remember this one time that I got, was traumatized in this or that fashion. But that has nothing to do with my argument that I'm having with my spouse or with my partner. Right. That I don't see the connection. You don't see the connection between people who were supposed to be there for you in childhood not being there for you. Right. And then the fear of this person in front of you not being there for you. And yeah. you don't see the anger or the fear coming out and attacking you know, this reactive attacking this emotional intensity that I see yeah. when they're trying to discuss something, but they're like, just the muscles in the neck and all this are just so tight when they're discussing and like, okay, your parents or your uh, either parent or the people in charge of you when you were young did not teach you collaborative mature negotiation self uh, self advocacy or communication skills so if they didn't teach you that how do they solve problems and mm-hmm. oftentimes the answer is well they would argue and fight and then they would just stop talking about it and then x amount of days later they would just start talking again so, well how was that thing resolved well they just didn't talk about it again <laughs> so the, the answer is there was no conflict resolution, no successful or effective or efficient conflict resolution skills taught. And so they didn't learn it. So they, so that's a habit. It's a, it's a skill. It's a skill. Yeah. So they don't have the skills. But well, I was never abused when I was a kid. But you didn't, you weren't taught that skill. And now you're accumulating all these, all these uh, struggles within your relationships that are causing it to break down because there's no skill of it and you don't and so there's the skill and then there's also like a lot of self uh like self story self narrative self talk like the little angel and devil on the on the (laughs) on the shoulders well it's just there's no angel it's just the devil it's just these little this little uh um like harsh inner critic that just puts all these self-doubting thoughts in there constantly i'm not worth this or or I'm not going to put up with that. And there's an aggression and response. So there's these core beliefs that develop. So yeah. there's a lack of skills and these core beliefs. Two brutal things that a lot of people just aren't aware of that were well set up in childhood. Right. Yeah. And they're just affecting daily interactions, daily relationships, daily work things, you know, daily self love or lack thereof. Yeah. Set up in childhood. and not obvious it doesn't it doesn't it's not super obvious yeah but i was never abused i was never you know sexually or physically abused right so so don't see it long answer to your question but (laughs) not many people can see all these little details of how much their childhood impacted yeah no you know communication skills learn how to deal with emotions being able to you know verbalize your emotions or even like you know person verbally abusing you not even realizing you know they're hurting your feelings or they're they're misguiding you where you have people that you know that are supposed to love you but yet they might have they might say mean things and they may have a mental disorder and they may have mental health issues and but the, the behaviors are yeah. affecting the people in the household. 
Yes, yes. And that's uh, one of the rules. Uh, let's see. I got my little outline here. Mm -hmm. This is healing requires training, education, and empathy for all. The empathy is for myself and for the others. So we can be really angry at our parents. And sometimes we, our parents tried, but they did have mental health issues, addiction issues, work, being sent overseas or being taken away or mm -hmm. dying. I mean, a parent can yeah. literally pass away and a child that's extremely traumatic. It's not the intentional, um, it's not, it's, there was no intentional damage done by the parents. Yeah. That they were struggling with their stuff and it just impaired their ability to be there consistently in a stable and loving, supportive, consistent, educating and mentoring yeah. uh, relationship. So, oh man, it's, it, it, it's really rough to be able to hold both of those, you know, anger or disappointment or whatnot. And at the same time, that, that natural affection for parents sometimes, like, I don't want to be angry at my parents. Right. You know, I don't want to disrespect them in so just that fashion, but they, I mean, they failed in some ways. Right. Oop, oops. You know? Yeah. I, not intentionally. But it wasn't there. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When, when it comes to, you know, the past is the past. We can't change the past. So how do you help these individuals, you know, now in the present tense? How do you get them to look at their past, look at the, the mistakes and the things that were done, those traumatic events that caused them to be who they are today? How do you start, you know, where, if the listeners really wanted to get an idea of how they could start changing their life and, and take in, you know, and make that, tra those traumatic events, the pain from it kind of not go away, but due to a, a way where they could cope with it and, and not feel those, those negative emotions that they probably feel subconsciously or consciously. What are some tips that you could probably, you know, you know, give them? <laughs> Man, it's a, it's a, how many days do we have? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we can always have you back on the show. You know, we'll start with a few. <laughs> I mean, I, I would respond in two two parts. The first part is, you know, we can't change the past. That that is a true statement. We can't change the actual factual occur the factual things that occurred in the past. But there are some amazing like uh, modern treatments that very much can change our memory or relationship with the past. Mm. So uh, I'll take a very s concrete example of a woman who uh, was in a car accident. And so this is as an adult she's in a car accident. And three months after the fact, she was still could not have a really hard time getting back into a vehicle. Yeah. Well, her memory of it, if she was in a car accident, there's you just can't change those facts. Right. And they had to, they had to, you know, take the jaws alive, cut her out of the car and, you know, had leg injury and all this stuff, you know? And so, uh, after about three months, we're practicing control breathing, muscle relaxation. So where she was getting to a, could, could, uh, stabilize herself and calm down yeah. on a regular basis and was working to get in the car. But there are some like, man, they're, they're really amazing new treatments, all kinds of, in the somatic realm, there's a lot of, research being done and in like uh, psychedelics, but like just the somatic stuff, the body work, biofeedback mm -hmm. and whatnot. One of those called eye movement desensitization reprocessing, EMDR. And, okay. um, and so we did, we did like one session of EMDR with her. So in one session we sat down and, and in EMDR you sit down and the therapist does something in front of your eyes. So you look at the thing and then you, you, you say, what comes to mind? You start with that picture. So she was starting with a picture of this right after the accident when she became conscious. And all she remembered at the first was panic. And then we do the little eye thing for 20 times. And then, okay, now what comes to mind? Well, the medics came, right? And she might talk for maybe 10, 20 seconds. And then, okay, now watch this. And the eye, the movements, uh, the eye movements distract yeah. the brain from being able to get stuck in that moment. Yeah. And so by the end of an hour of what comes next, what comes next, at the end of it, her then weeks later, she, when she, she came back, she was like, she had no problem getting back in the car. Everything was, it was amazing. It changed her relationship with that. 
or re reactivity to that memory because by the end of it, her brain was no longer stuck on that moment of panic and life-threatening danger. Her brain remembered the whole thing that included her surviving, her, uh, the medic showing up promptly, the fire team showing up and cutting her out very quickly, her mother showing up, and her, uh, her uh, girlfriend or wife showing up, all the support coming there to successfully whisk her to the hospital and save everything. So it's, it became a memory of overcoming danger instead of a moment of, I could die any moment. Yeah. So that message and that relationship with that changed. So there's a, a part of dealing with the past. Some people have very vague memories of the past, and some people have very distinct, precise memories of the past. Yeah. And both of those, there are some uh, really wonderful uh, treatments like that that keep coming out that that really change our our experience of the past yeah. concerning those symptoms of reacting or getting. That, that intense reaction to triggers of it. Okay. Right. So that's, that has to do with uh, treating the re-experiencing symptoms. Uh, you know, uh, my favorite approach that I take in the book is just setting the foundation of education just so we understand what's going on. Right. Once we understand our primal brain is, in, is the part of our brain that's in, involved in uh, that is its job is to take care of us. It's like our friendly yeah. bodyguard. Mm-hmm. And if it forgot that you got in a car accident or for, you forgot that you, if it forgot that you got attacked in this street corner, it'd be doing yeah. a terrible job and you would, you would not pass on your genes and would not, this human species would not survive. Right. The primal brain, its job is to remind you about this danger and don't ever yeah. let you forget. <laughs> and then secondly, avoid it. Right. So uh, a lot of the treatment starts with teaching that part of the brain what does it take to be able to survive it if it does happen again in a healthy fashion? So when the triggers come up, what do we do about it to successfully move past them? Do I have confidence and skills to be able to do that? So we want to teach that part of the brain how to respond to these real or perceived threats. Wow. So that covers some of just a, Touching on how do we yeah. heal from these re-experiencing symptoms of tremendous distress when encountering triggers? Mm -hmm. And then how do we start training our primal brain to function now successfully? Calm down if I don't need you to amp me up for a fist fighter to run. Right. Calm down so I can think clearly and yeah. succeed in work and relationships and these other things. So then comes the next part, which is uh, much more broad scope and complex. Mm -hmm. which is, and that's where my, where my book comes in. That's what I wanted my book to, um, to offer something to people unique. And that is, uh, I wanted to answer the question when I, when I started seeing clients, all these clients, I was, I was, you know, I guess because of my, again, fairly quite happy, quasi, you know, quite healthy. Mm -hmm. When I had these people come in, I was, sh I was really su shocked and I, it was hard for me to believe so, in the beginning that somebody could have so much trauma happen to them in one lifetime. Yeah. Like, like how's it possible? It's, it seemed impossible. There yeah. must be things in this environment that allowed for repeated trauma to occur. And that's what I was looking for is w you look for in the research and in books and resources. I wanted a comprehensive list of it. Yeah. And I couldn't find it. I could find something to deal with that inner voice, you know, with the critic or the re-experiencing stuff, EMDR, mm -hmm. but not this comprehensive curriculum. Yeah. And that's what I wanted mine to be. So I, I started the list. Well, um, fight or flight, free. we have to be able to calm ourselves down and understand the necessity of that. Yeah. We have to understand the difference between surviving, uh, you know, victims, victim, survivor, thriver. We have to understand yeah. the difference of those so that we can have a goalpost. So these right. are different different variables. And it started out with, I had 13 and I ran that curriculum for 
a couple of years and it expanded to 20 ran that for a couple of years and i was very it, it, the 20 seems to hold there 20 different variables mm -hmm. 20 different areas of life uh in this environment that we want to have uh, educate ourselves about just understand it and yeah. evaluate where we are we are on that where are we on that one am i yeah. strong on that one great let me move on to the next one mm -hmm. uh and then for each one of those if we understand that that's a weakness let's say uh rule number 13 secrets destroy mm -hmm. if i'm really good at discussing secrets with everybody and i don't hold secrets okay well awesome that, that's great you might not need to do much work on that but if you've never spoken to anyone about your abuse or you've never broached the subject or your family just stays away from those uncomfortable or taboo tuck like those old family to shame secrets yeah then maybe that's the one that that's one to work on and you can start with my book because we understand the concepts just to if we don't air it out then it cannot we cannot get corrective feedback from others mm -hmm. i cannot get here from professionals or from loved ones i cannot correct my own thinking in isolation yeah so it, it just stays or go, it gets worse. So, and then from there, uh, you know, we'd want to look at different resources. If that, uh, so, okay, secrets so now I understand that's what I need to do. And there are other books and professionals and other things to expand that and really go in depth into that one. Yeah. But mine is a comprehensive list that I hope gets people started understanding where they need to focus which yeah. skills they need to develop, where do they need to educate, and who do they need to talk to to kind of get that ball rolling. Now, what is the name of your book? Uh, <laughs> it's called, uh, This is How We Heal from Painful Childhoods, A Practical okay. Guide for Healing Past Intergenerational Stress and Trauma. It's a long title, but <laughs> much like the book, I, I tried to make the book concise, but the title yes. was long. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of my style of uh, used to be therapy and now life coaching. A lot of my life coaching is is very open and direct. I don't want to, I don't want you to believe me. I'm the expert. Just trust me and do it. I just want to offer you the education for you to educate so that then you understand it, and now yes. you can make your own decisions. Right. Because now you have that skill and that education. Right. That's that's the goal here. So it's a long title, but the chapters are pretty concise. It's, it's a lot packed into it. You know, it's funny, one of the things you were saying kind of like resonated so many people I know that when they have trauma in their life, it seems like they'll have trauma, they'll overcome it eventually, they'll have a period, you know, a short period where everything is working out fine. And then all of a sudden, it recycles itself, and then trauma enters its life again. And it's just it's just like an yeah. endless cycle over and over and over again. Yes, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So one aspect of that is we feel like we got past it. And so we stopped doing the work. Okay. And then we can fall backwards and whatnot. Uh, one consistent theme of the book, just my belief in this process is, uh, you know, we can get, we can get past, heal past individual traumas and whatnot. But life yeah. itself is challenging. Life oh, itself yeah. is difficult. Life itself is always throwing everybody curveballs is, is challenging. Yeah. And people who've experienced a lot of childhood uh, trauma, it's like that's just amplified. It's like it, everything is on steroids. Whatever naturally happens to me, one of my clients who's had all this awful stuff happen, it's just ramped on steroids. It's like 10 time factor, what have you, or 20 time or 100 time factor. Hard yeah. for me to calm down, really hard for them to calm down. So they get to a level of success and a lot of my clients would get to a level of success and they say i i'm happier than i've ever been before i love myself more than i ever had before and i feel solid and they'd stop and then about two years later i love it when they come back two years later and they say just having rough stuff happening i would like to resume before it goes further down right awesome so to me, uh, it, it's like the martial arts in the sense that yeah. you can learn them. And then if you get out of shape and don't do it for a long time, 
you can't function on the level that you did. So it's a, it's yes. a constant thing. We put a lot of work in at the beginning. And then we, we do a little bit more than maintain. We do maintain the things. We can do the certain things to maintain. Yeah. But then it's even better to have a lifetime, a lifestyle of choosing to, to just keep learning, keep educating, keep yes. on it. You know, just a, a, a positive podcast that just keeps, like yours, that just keeps introducing uh, different components of life that you could maybe do some work on. Mm-hmm. Like it, it just keeps it there. It's a lifestyle of constantly evaluating and trying to bulk up the, the skills and, and strengths and build on those, you know, and addressing issues before they become bad. Right. But uh, those cycles are, are they're, they're challenging, of, of course. And it, but it, it, so it's to try to fight that, that sense of, oh, I got over my childhood. I'm done. Yeah. You're done at age 30. <laughs> uh, a lot of people also there, there's a another a, a, one example of an interesting phenomenon is you know somebody gets past their childhood and they really did a amazing job of going to therapy kicking butt and everything and, and then 20 years later they have a child or two children or what have you and then their first child is becoming close to the age when they were themselves when the parent themselves were traumatized Okay. Yeah. And they don't realize they start feeling this increase in anxiety in their life. And they start having some breakdown of, uh, of like their, their routine and their psychological, like positive functioning. And it's, oh, okay. There's a, it's that primal brain, not letting them forget what happened, but now their, their kid is part of them. You know, it's a, it's a, yeah. I mean, child is like, parents experience that as a part of them and that yeah. part of them is about to experience that 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 thing yeah. and so you know through through nothing wrong they did or anything like that they yeah. didn't fall down it, it's just a natural curveball that life is throwing them right their anatomy is throwing them they remember the primal brain remembers be careful somebody's gonna get you somebody's gonna get your kids somebody's gonna get you somebody's gonna get you yeah so yeah, so they, you know, when they come in, fantastic. Let's let's make sure that we have safety things and mechanism, safety precautions there, and what happens when, and what do we do if, and all those kinds of things. Now, are there things that actually people can do at home? Now, it's it's a hundred percent. I believe that you need to have you need to have some sort of therapy. You need to have some sort of coaching to guide you along the way. You need to really have an unbiased opinion where someone listens to you and guides you to that healing process. But is there yes. things that they can do also at home to help them along the way to, to help them heal, you know, um, different, different tools or techniques that you suggest that people can utilize in their own home? Um, Nowadays, more than ever, with you know just all the online stuff and all the people producing online, like even just from ten years ago and twenty years ago, it's it's a it's really mind-boggling, wonderful how much work we can do at home, especially if we know the ballpark or the even more than the ballpark, the specifics of what to work on. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, they have courses online, there's online counseling, you can be in your home, like I had clients who were, who were shut-ins, you know, mm-hmm. just would leave the house once a week or once or less than that. Yeah. And so we start with the online and then work our way up to other stuff, you know, but uh, I mean, I, I think educating ourselves with a lot of this free or low cost is a great way to start. Uh, as soon as possible, it's nice to get some professional guidance just to help fine tune where to go. Right. So if somebody's not on a budget, I would just say, go find the expert on it and hire them and get, get started, get that first year under your belt started. Yes. Build up all these skills to get started. If somebody's on a strict budget, I say, okay, well, let's get, start looking for the research, looking through the free stuff online, figuring out yeah what area you think you need to work on Mm -hmm. hire a professional in that area just for a short time like i'm uh four or five sessions so that 
you get their evaluation to say, well, I understand you think that this is what you're supposed to work on, but, but this area, for example, in, very early in the book, I just ex explained a lot of, a lot of people with complex PTSD, which is a very mm -hmm. common, it's, it's maybe the most common, like, um, mental health disorder that would be the result of childhood uh, trauma, trauma. Okay. Complex PTSD, but yeah. complex PTSD is not even, uh, Officially, kind of recognized, insurance won't pay for it, and, and it would, but you know, and therefore, a lot of times they get diagnosed with bipolar because they're mm. experiencing and behaving in these intensely. They feel on top of the world one moment, and you know, suicidal, homicidal the next. Well, that's well, it's, that sounds bipolar. It just sounds bipolar. Yeah. On one end yeah. and then the other, it feels like that. So they get that diagnosed. So they're doing all this research at home and got all these books. I have a my book library has a section of bipolar books that these people came in and my clients brought in, brought to me like, I don't need these anymore. Once they started looking at complex PTSD, instantly yeah. they found more valuable, uh, you know, more specific information that, so, oh, well, this is what I'm dealing with. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's great in the beginning to get some professional advice. Uh, you know, a lot of people struggle, uh, a lot of people with trauma who just struggled a lot with, uh, medical, physical stuff, you know, with eating disordered stuff or uh, chronic pain. It, these are just very common. Yeah. And that's a really difficult one because, you know, you, you go to a nutritionist and a regular nutritionist might write out a little prescription on how to lose weight mm -hmm. without understanding that this is directly tied to traumatic emotional coping eating habits. Right. Oh man. Okay. Well, we need. So, where who would best serve them would be a trauma-informed nutrition specialist. Right. They're out there, you know, and and it's about uh, changing our relationship with food and our means of self-soothing. Yeah. In a more in a more uh, mature or comprehensive or a more advanced way than. I feel bad. So I'm going to treat myself to this, you know? Yeah. So in summary, they got lots of awesome free stuff online and low cost stuff online. And I think it's a wonderful investment to, to do, even if just a few sessions to get some mm -hmm. guidance. And then maybe if, if that person was great for you, great. If it wasn't, you find a new specialist and until it's somebody that you feel good and safe and, you know, healthily challenged by, Right. Uh, yeah, and then and, and that starts the process. Yeah, you know? yeah. I feel like people have to recognize too that it's, it's you know the healing process is not an easy process. That it takes time, and it also it, it can be very painful going back into those memories and then you know yeah. connect with those emotions and then learn how to cope and and you know move forward after connecting with those emotions. You know, I think could be really painful for an individual, but it seems like at the end, there's a, definitely a rainbow at the end once they've gotten to that point. Very much so. And they, they have different approaches to it. And, and when I was uh, an earlier therapist, you know, just new to it, I uh, said, so well, this person, you know, the average that somebody goes to therapy is at like three months or so, you know, it just, mm -hmm. it's just the average, you know. And so yeah. if that's the case, well, we better hurry up and try to handle these. Let's go ahead and handle these traumatic memories. Yeah, yeah. And and then that's just too intense. It's too much. You walk in the door and let's jump right in and do some uh, systematic desensitization and all. It's like it, it does. It is a long road. It takes a while, uh, and people come in fearful. And, I, and now I much prefer to start with establishing a foundation of making sure that the client can be can sit there feeling mm -hmm. safe and in control of our relationship and of that room and feeling yeah. safe. Like if they are in survival mode sitting in front of me, then they're not ready to open that can and start diving into all these trauma memories. Right. We have to first develop that skill of self-soothing and understanding that if there's nothing life-threatening in this room right now, then it does mean it doesn't do me much good to be in survival mode. Yeah. Like I, I'm right now I have a, I've gotten my anxiety level lower, my performance anxiety lower by mm -hmm. practice. 
Right. But the first public speaking thing or podcast did, I was way up here. I, mean, I was, you know, at levels like six or seven anxiety oh. out of 10. So that's me telling my primal brain, essentially, there's a seven out of 10 chance that something's going to kill me right now. And so <laughs> I need to be in survival mode. And, you know, as scary as you look, Stacey, I don't believe that you're going to kill me now. Yeah. And therefore, there's no, there's not a need for me to be in survival mode. Yeah. But my primal brain is like, well, wait, what if you make a fool of yourself and then people ostracize you and you're never heard from in there? Yeah. So imagine that pumped up on steroids. Right. You know, imagine that fear response being a hundred times more intense because somebody has experienced tremendous, you know, uh, yeah. Tremendous fear and, and whatnot. So, you know, it's, it doesn't do too much good to jump right into these harsh memories if we don't, if we haven't learned the skill of being able to truly be, be and feel safe in a, what is a truly safe environment. Right. Once we're there and we feel ready for it, okay, well then maybe we can do this. Yeah. And, and there's, there's, a, there's a little bit of a common misperception that that we need to. We need to open that cannon and go through all these memories. Yeah. Some some of my clients have net we've never gone through the details of their trauma. Right. If you're having if you're struggling in your relationship, you with your significant other, mm -hmm. and there's all this intensity, and then we do these skills and apply them now, and mm -hmm. suddenly you have this you get to the point of being able to collaboratively solve, resolve issues. And you get to this point of feeling even safer than you ever had with this person yeah. who you are engaged to, then you feel more confident and that can change the experience of the past. Like, Oh, that was the past because now I am safe. Right. And sometimes actually a fairly a fair percentage of the time after they got to that point of, feeling and being successful in their current life. Yeah. Well, do you still want to go in and fish around in those old memories? Like, no, nah, not really. I'm good. <laughs> I, I recognize that those were things that happened in my childhood. Right. And then sometimes, sometimes there were little ones that linger, you know, like, Hey, you know, like when being physically intimate, some people with their significant other, sometimes there are some physical triggers that are just too much. And so, well, let's go ahead and deal with those. And then we'll deal with those in a couple of sessions. And then, can get back to it you know yeah but success in today's life does change our, our our confidence that was maybe non-existent from the childhood stuff you know? right. so, you, so you don't always have to i just want people to understand you don't always have to directly play in all these terrible uh traumatic memories you yeah. don't need you when you walk into a uh, a therapy or, or a trauma coaching office, you're not going to be ambushed and have to do all these the terrible things. Mm -hmm. And if somebody does suggest that you need to, and you ought to, and you have to, to get, well, find somebody who is willing to move at the pace that you're good with, that you're comfortable with. Right. I'm not the right guy for everybody. That's for certain. Some people need to have a, a woman. Some people need to have a, uh, somebody who does different type of therapy, uh, somebody needs to have something else, which it's okay to shop around. Right. Yeah. Keep shopping, keep shopping until you find <laughs> a, a person who can deliver, you know? Yeah. Have, have you noticed, you know, like from, from my own perspective, dealing with people and dealing with clients have, you know, when people have had traumatic childhoods, um, a lot of times I notice that they hold a lot of anger they have very short tempers. They are not happy. You can see they, you know, sometimes, yes. you know, people resort to alcohol to give them that little boost of it, let go of those negative feelings for a short period of time. You know, they're using other coping yeah. mechanisms, but they, they kind of have that wall up that you could see when you first meet them. You could just, you could feel it yeah. when you meet them. And those negative emotions that those people carry, and a lot of times it's because of the child their childhood trauma that's happened to them that they've never yeah. had time to you know take the time to heal and overcome. Yes, and that that is a 
that that's that specifically what you're talking about, which is in my book, it'd be a, a combination of what we call chapter two and three, which one is who you are in sympathetic is not who you are in parasympathetic. So sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system is either our survival mode or rest and digest. Okay. So in a loving relationship, in a loving, safe, mutually respecting, mutually supportive relationship, there's no yeah. need for me to be in survival response. Right. Because I'm not in a life-threatening situation. Yes. So why am I stuck there? I'm yes. stuck there for two reasons. One, my body is stuck in chronic survival mode because I'm ready. And why am I ready? Because of called chapter three, trauma lies are just that, lies. But trauma lies refers to the subconscious directives that were developed in childhood in response to these traumas right that are incredibly difficult to change they just stay there until we illuminate them bring them into the conscious mm -hmm. and then practice not believing them and then practice replacing them with life truths yeah for example a uh, okay, a, one per, a child who is physically abused by a parent. Part of the one trauma lie is will be something like the person who is supposed to love and protect me will injure me when it suits them, will hurt me, will take from me. Mm -hmm. That's about the uh, that's about what's going to happen. Well, then there's another trauma lie about what do I need to do to survive? Do yeah. I need to fight them? Do I need to flight, run away from them? Do I need to freeze, just numb out? Or do I need to fawn? Do I need to do whatever they tell me to do yeah. so that it won't happen? So I have this belief that this other person is going to do it. And I had this belief, subconscious, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I'm not doing this on purpose. I had this belief that I need to do one of those survival responses to that person to survive it. Right. And I have a belief about myself. I'm not of sufficient value for my parent to do this to me. I'm to refrain from doing that. Yeah. And therefore I'm not of sufficient value for my significant other to not do this to me. So they have these trauma lies and we have to practice. Uh, we have to bring them into the light and then practice training, change them so that we can have the adult corrective experiences. Right. So one client, for example, this just, oh man, she was so awesome, really advanced, like a very educated woman. And uh, she, you know, when her husband, when she would make a little mistake, husband would try to, would kind of say, hey, what's going on with this? She would just lie like crazy and he didn't understand why she was lying. Right. And the lie was based on this trauma lie of, or lying, saying, I didn't make a mistake, it was based on this trauma lie of, if I'm not perfect, he's going to leave me, reject me, hurt me. Right. Like if, if you forget to pay the freaking electric bill, he's going to leave your marriage, leave you. Like that, when we bring it to the light, it's, it's kind of obvious that's, that's silly. Yeah. If, because in this case, let's, let's be mindful that sometimes in the re-experiencing, we select unhealthy other people. Yes. But this man was happened to be her husband was a you know a safe and healthy man. So, you know, so once we illuminated those trauma lies and she could see, oh, okay, well, we need to replace it with a life truth. Yes. Well, in order to be successful in this marriage, I must be vulnerable and trust that he will continue to love me because mm -hmm. Eliminating, you know, or right, rewriting, I'm not valuable enough. I am valuable enough. Yes. And doing the other one, there are people out there that will not harm me in a meaningful way. Everybody's going to disappoint one another, but not in a severely damaging fashion. So life yeah. truths are always a bit more mature in their understanding. The life truth, the, the trauma lies were made by a child's brain and planted in that subconscious. And so yeah. they're very short, partial directives. Fight. Well, no, mm -hmm. 
in adulthood, we say, oh, I need to collaborate. I need to self-advocate. Yes. So then came, you, you spoke briefly, you asked briefly about the anger part, and there's a tremendous amount of anger. So this woman was in her 60s. That's 60 years of fawning, of lying and then fawning to make him try to forget about it by cooking him all the stuff and distracting him. Yeah. Well, 60 years of suppressing her own frustration. Well, yes, anger came up for her. There's a healthy period of what do I do with all this? You know, oftentimes it's what do I do with this just righteous rage that has now that is now coming to the surface. Mm -hmm. And that's where we that's often a lot of work goes into that. Yeah. We look at what were the other emotions driving that rage and how do we disperse that negative energy how do we get it out not taking on the hus this husband was just a, a really loving respectful man so when she did speak up and at first she spoke up i don't have to pay the drug. he was like whoa what's going on and then she said i'm sorry what a i made an error and i'm fearful that you're going to leave me and his response was consistently when she would invite him in a session his response consistently was well that's just well no that's you do you're an amazing uh spouse you're an amazing housewife you're amazing yeah you, just, you made this little error i don't understand why you would think that it was disbelief like he didn't understand yeah. oh, well just a little education allowed them to understand oh i see oh okay and then they could collaborate on this and you could say oh I, you seem to be having a lot of anger what's going on for you right collaborative conflict resolution, self-advocacy, self-talk, all these are skills yes. right, required to be successful. Mm -hmm. Whew, man, a lot of work, right? So it's a lifestyle, a lot of work. Yeah, you know, but it's it's so worth it because to go through life and to have your traumatic events from your childhood affect your entire life and then to struggle your entire life and, and to have all those blockages and all those obstacles, you know, that could be actually, you know, um, broken up and, and you could actually be able to move forward if you tackle those events. In your in your past life those traumatic events that you felt were very impactful that changed your life completely if you're able to somehow learn coping mechanisms to overcome them and to just be able to just focus on your present life and be able to focus on po positive goals could be such yes. a, a important experience and and change your life dramatically and relationships too I, I sometimes I, I think of it as I don't know if you ever, you ever uh, if you watch like horse racing and dog racing like the dogs they're pent up and they're just waiting to run because they're made to run it's so beautiful yeah. they have they're like and they're just being held back by this cage and I, sometimes I picture it in that fashion it's just holding people back from ex an explosion of of engaging in the world out there successfully yeah because of these obstacles or limitations these fear based or habit based or lack of you know awareness or education based lack of insight based you know and sometimes the very traumas that that impacted them once they've opened that gate and they've learned the things that make them feel safe enough to be able to be themselves and chase down what they want yeah they do things that other people cannot right like i mean they uh, some like one client for example i mean he was, as a man, abused by a man as a childhood and developed a lot of addiction stuff. And when he was able to, without, with, with less fear, not with no fear, but with less fear and more confidence, mm -hmm. engage, he was able to go into these addiction recovery environments and speak in a group about being uh, abused sexually as a, as a, as a boy. That's... Man, I get the chills every day. I mean, sometimes uh, I get the chills yeah. when I think about it every time because it's who can do that? That's okay. so. Oh, that's a man right there, man. That's yeah. amazing to me that he can do that and he can he can reach out to other men and people. people in that environment that would never step forward. And when he does in these appropriate environments, they step forward and like I want you to be my sponsor because I've never thought I'd ever be able to say, I just can't imagine saying what you just said. 
Yeah. I can't offer that to people, but this right. guy can. Right. And that gate was just holding him back. And now, bam, it's open and he can. Oh, it's so cool. It oh, right. man, that dude is so, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Now, if we had to take everything you talked about today and you wanted to emphasize on some important factors, what are some of the things that you want the listeners to understand? The, I guess the most important is that there, there's, there's really wonderful resources and services out there. There's treatments and things to, to gain inside education, understanding, confidence, and skills. It's, it's there, and it's, it's worth looking into. It's worth investing your time and some finances and efforts into it. It'll, it's going to be an unbelievable investment. You get so much yeah. out of it. And there's just wonderful stuff out there that was not there 20 years ago. And it really wasn't there 50 years ago. Right. And it's, it is. And it, you know, when just learning all the stuff in school was kind of frustrating sometimes. So I'm like, they have all this wonderful, amazing research and skills. And it's, it's not in the schools. It's not being taught. Like people don't know it's out there. Yeah. Start reading, start watching, uh, you know, YouTube or, or these, these free resources, you know, or low cost resources that are, that, you know, that start to educate you on what's, what's available. Mm -hmm. And then just steady, steady, start moving up that involvement as you, as you see what's available. Yeah, it's just so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So That's if you're thinking about maybe looking into it, it'll be worth it. Do it. It's not easy. Like you said, it's not, it's not, I'm not promising it's going to be easy at all. I'm just saying it's going to be worth it if you stick through the hump and open that gate to the possibilities of what, what have you, you want in your life. Yeah. You want something solid in your life. You want a healthy environment within your primary relationship or within, with your family, for your kid. You want that, man, there's stuff out there to help you do it. Start with my book. If you've had trauma, childhood trauma stuff, it's a great starting point. There's going to be a bunch of more things to do. Mine will not solve everything. No one thing will. Right. But get started on it because it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fascinating journey that has gold on the street to pick up if you know where to go and find it. And where can we find it? Oh, uh, well, thank you. I always forget about that part. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. My, um, uh, my website is uh, ernestellanderphd.com. Uh, my book one is just healfromchildhood.com. And then the book is available on Amazon Bookstore. At, uh, let's see. It's, again, it's This is How We Heal from Painful Childhoods, A Practical Guide for Healing Past Intergenerational Stress and Trauma. And what, and it, what's, oh, go ahead, finish. Uh, and the, I'm hoping, I, I'm, I'll hope to have it on audiobook in about a month to now, from now, maybe six weeks. Oh, and good. then in another, by the end of this year, I want to be cranking out, uh, starting my YouTube channel where I mm -hmm. produce just uh, some video content. Just that puts the, I, want, I would like to do one uh, video per chapter just to get it out there for free to kind of get, I, I just want the, all that information out there when people yeah. are, don't want, I don't want money to be the barrier to people getting at least that foundational level of education and awareness of what's available to them. Right. You know? Yeah. And that's wonderful that you're doing that. Now, what services do you provide? On, um... Thank you. Life coaching. So life coaching specifically. Yes. I did a clinical psychology thing. I was a, I was a clinical psychologist for I don't know, 10, 12 years, something like that. I, it took me about a, over a year of I, uh, sabbatical to just to finish the book. Mm -hmm. And now I'm doing strictly life and trauma coaching. So I did do in person and online, uh, okay. life and trauma coaching. Yeah. So and, that, and that's most appropriate. Uh, let's say if, if somebody's really struggling with heavy uh, mental health symptoms, uh, I like to say find a good local uh, a therapist, hopefully, 
Yeah. That can help you just to, to get some of those basics down and make sure you're connected to somebody. And when you're ready for some uh, kind of fine tuning and, and understanding the, the trauma p- picture, yes. I love the trauma coaching. It's, it's really challenging, but I, I like that. It's, it's intriguing to me. It's drawn to the complexity of it. So, uh, so it's life or trauma and or trauma coaching. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And they can find all this information on your website. Yes. Yes. You can find it on Ernest owner, PhD.com. <laughs> I love it. Oh my God. This has been amazing. You know, I really enjoyed having you on the show today. I think it's such an important topic because I think everyone almost, I'm not gonna say everyone, you know, a large percentage of society goes through some type of childhood trauma that, you know, will affect them some way, somehow along the way. There's all different levels that it could affect you at, but there are things in life. It's sometimes life, you know, the obstacles in life are unavoidable and it impacts everybody differently, but having somebody like yourself is beneficial. I mean, I, I hope you don't mind me. Sh- I mean, you 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 explained your background with the medical issues that you ran into, and now you've written books on that. Is just it's phenomenal. It's a wonderful example of a medical thing that I'm sure was rough in your childhood, huh? Oh yeah, it definitely was. I had a lot of obstacles to endure. <laughs> yes, and now you're doing this, <laughs> spreading positive information and writing books and whatnot that helps people like. Yeah, as it was about, huh? Love it. And, yeah. and thank you so much for having me here today. I really appreciate it. Oh, well, thank wonderful. you. Yes, and so are you. You know, I really appreciate you doing this because I, I, you know, I know so many people that were affected traumatically by their childhood and, you know, it held them back in so many different ways. So having you here and having you share your information and also the services you provide, you know, can help people overcome, you know, really traumatic, you know, events in their life that they had in the past so they can move forward and actually be happy because that's what life is about, being happy. And when you have traumatic events in your life and they're affecting your their present tense of your life, it's very hard to be happy and it's very hard to function the way you want to be. And, you know, sometimes you'll get up in the morning, you'll look in the mirror and you just don't like the person you see and you want to be able to be happy, but you just don't know where to begin. So having someone like yourself who could actually gear a person to understand what happened and understand how they can get overcome it is, is wonderful. So I thank you for everything that you do. I thank you for all your advice today. You are wonderful. And I hope that you'll come back on the show. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, Sage. Thank you so much. Uh, You're welcome. You have a great day. You too.